In this video I'd like to go into a little more detail about the specifics of the manipulator field node and describe features that aren't quite obvious. If you haven't seen the video manipulator field introduction yet, you should do so now. First let's look at the scalar field. Visualizing the field with the scalar field scope node is an excellent and fast method. However, the representation using colors and point sizes is a bit vague for our eyes. Therefore, I use a simple graph to move the points of a polygon plane vertically according to the field strength. Then it looks like this. This bump in the polygon plane corresponds to the field strength. The best way to see this is with a front camera. The manipulator is a volume axis field node in Maya. This node actually belongs to the nucleus solver. The node itself has no function. It is only used to represent the shapes and to carry the attributes. In the channel box, the relevant attributes are clearly visible. For the display in the attribute editor, I had to lock all attributes that have no function. In the center of the manipulator, the field strength corresponds to the set magnitude, in this case 1. Towards the edge of the manipulator, the field strength decreases down to 0 in an S-shape. Outside the manipulator, the field strength is 0 everywhere. If I now change the magnitude, I can immediately see the same in the geometry. Now I can also see the attenuation exactly. Values greater than 1 produce a fast, strong drop towards the edge, and values smaller than 1 create a plateau of high field strength values in the center of the manipulator. An attenuation of 1 should produce a linear drop from the center to the edge. However, we see an S-curve here. This S-curve is in fact a curve that can be adjusted on the manipulator node, right here. If I change the curve, then I can see it immediately on the falloff of my manipulator. If you prefer a linear falloff, then you can load an adequate preset. It is even possible to invert the curve. Now there is a field strength of 0 inside the manipulator, which increases to 1 towards the edge and keeps this value everywhere outside the manipulator. I set the curve back to the S-shaped curve, which is the default in the manipulator field. Now I will create another manipulator. As you can see, the field strengths of overlapping manipulators are added. If the average of all field strengths is needed as an output, then this can be set at the manipulator field node. Here under Settings, these attributes are normally connected to the Bifrost Graph node so that all settings can be accessed in Maya. However, if you have the Bifrost editor open anyway, then you can also disconnect these connections and make the settings here in the parameters window of the Bifrost editor. The Add Weights attribute toggles between Addition and Average. With average, the field strength of the individual manipulators is divided by the number of manipulators and then added together. I will talk about the limit setting a little bit later. The setting use max has the effect that simply the highest field strength of all manipulators is the result. Use max has also the effect that no more negative values appear. Finally, we have the clamp setting, which simply limits the resulting field strength to the range of values between min and max. All these settings can of course be combined with each other. Back to the settings of the manipulators. To generate random field strengths, I added a fractal noise field. With the attribute fractal noise, I can control how much of the fractal noise is added to the field strength. 
the fractal noise is multiplied with the field strength before. This results firstly in the fact that the fractal noise also runs out in a gentle fall off, and secondly that the magnitude scales everything. So with the magnitude I can scale the whole thing larger and smaller or even into the negative range. A special case are negative values for fractal noise. A value of minus 2, for example, generates negative and positive values equally, which can still be scaled with magnitude. If I increase the resolution of the polygon plane, then it becomes apparent that the fractal noise is composed of overlapping wave functions. With noise frequency, I can set the general frequency. With the values scale noise and transform noise, the frequency and the position of the noise function can be coupled smoothly to the manipulator. A word about the limit setting, which I didn't explain earlier. If this switch is on, then for each manipulator the field strength is reduced so that magnitude and fractal noise never produce values greater than 1. If you combine this with average, then you can be sure that the range of the values of the field strength is always between 0 and 1. Now to the vector field. A visualization with a polygon plane is not very helpful here. In this example I simply added the vector of the field to the respective vertices. Magnitude and attenuation have clearly recognizable effects. But to better capture the spatial distribution of the vectors I will use a vector field scope node. Here we see a vertical slice through the manipulator's field. In the default settings all vectors point away from the center. This is the result of the away from center attribute. It is important to note that away from center and away from axis attributes apply only to specific manipulator shapes respectively. Away from center applies only to box and sphere shapes and away from axis applies to cylinder, cone and torus. The value along axis adds a vector along the main axis to the field. The main axis is usually the y axis in the initial position of the manipulator, only for the torus it is the circle line. The value around axis adds to the field a vector around the major axis. To better illustrate the spatial behavior of the vector field, I switch on the flow lines in the vector field scope node. Now I add some fractal noise. For the vector field, the fractal noise generator adds random vectors to the field. As with the scalar field, the scale noise and transform noise values can be used to smoothly couple the frequency and positions of the noise function to the manipulator. Finally to the ID field. This field is used to control the generation of instances. Each manipulator gets a new sequential ID when it is created but the IDs can be set as desired. The field strength of the ID field is the ID of that manipulator with the strongest magnitude. Here we see a simple experimental setup. The polygon plane on the left shows the strength of the scalar field as a vertical deformation as seen earlier. The plane on the right uses the strength of the ID field for vertical deformation. You can clearly see the levels of the IDs 1, 2 and 3, while the field outside the manipulators has a field strength of minus 1. Above the right polygon plane we see three kinds of instances for the three IDs. The bifrost graph shows how the points of the polygon plane lead directly into the node create instances and how the ID field is determined for all these points.
In the test scene, I can now move a manipulator and watch how the instances change. The behavior is a bit strange. To better understand the ID field and its properties, I make another set of instances directly on the polygon plane that is deformed by the scalar field. I'll also turn on the Use Max option. This will make the amount of deformation equal to the field strength of the strongest manipulator at that point. Now we can directly see how a higher magnitude affects the instances. Due to the falloff, it is difficult to control the distribution of a specific ID. So I set the attenuation of all three manipulators to zero. Now we have the simplest case in front of us. Only the magnitude of the manipulators decides which ID can prevail for the instances. But how can I mix the different IDs now? How can I create a random distribution? The best way is to set the magnitude a bit higher and then set a negative fractal noise. If you balance the magnitude and the fractal noise properly, then you have a good control over the density of each ID. If I want to thin out a certain ID, which means set it to the background value of minus one, then I can also try this with a negative fractal noise. The best way is to set fractal noise to minus two and then try to achieve the desired result by means of slightly larger values as well as the interaction with attenuation. Actually, the attribute erode ID was intended for this use case. Unfortunately, it doesn't work very well in version one of the manipulator field, but a better version is already on the way. For your own tests, I provide a test scene for download. In this scene, all three fields are displayed as deformation of geometry as well as field scopes or instances.